Bevenino's Freight fans, and welcome to the Horror Show. I am Jaime in Fuego here to present a special encore presentation that originally in 2015 was seen on my then YouTube channel, Jaime in Fuego, which was for a program called Infuego Tainment that is in the process of a relaunch. But we thought that for the month of October, the best thing that we could do was bring the entire series coverage of the 1980s and 90s Tales from the Crypt HBO television show over to the horror show, show it to a larger audience so that they can appreciate all of the hard work. Man, did I bust my ass for that month or so getting every single one of the 93 episodes done and reviewed and spoken about. We did a little of my uh, little trope at the time, which was Bueno Malo Feo, which is a good episode, a bad episode, and an ugly episode. I am taking these three at a time, and then also a special three-episode final edition covering all three of the films. Yes, there are, in fact, three films. So join me here as we jump into, uh, yeah, a little bit of a horrific relic that I am very proud to show all of you guys. So uh, until next time, stay scared. Que paso, boys and ghouls? This is Jaime in Fuego here. You're on Enfuego Tainment, where I cover the hottest entertainment with an edge. And I have an October treat for all of you. Or is it a trick? I don't know. Maybe perhaps it is a bit of both. Because I'm going to be showcasing for the next 31 days as we lead up to my beloved Halloween, my favorite holiday of the entire year, one of my favorite shows of all time. I love the horror stuff, as you guys know from seeing me on the horror show, possibly. And I'm going to be spotlighting these next 31 days, one of my favorite shows of all time. I love anthology horror and I love Tales from the Crypt. Seriously, it was a show that scared the crap out of me as a child. Yes, I stayed up very late against my parents' permission to watch those episodes. Now, granted, that was on Fox where they were toned down a little bit. You still kind of got the gist of the stories, obviously, but the gore, the nudity, the profanity, all the stuff that this show was known for. Yeah, it was kind of toned down a little bit, but you still caught the vibe of what was going down. The storytelling was still great. And I'm basically going to go through all 93 episodes in these next 31 days. So if you do the math, that's three episodes per day, right? Kind of funny how that worked out so perfectly. It seemed destined. It seemed like someone was supposed to do it, and I am going to do that. So let's get right into it. On Enfuegotainment, for those of you who have seen me before, or for those of you who are new to the proceedings, we basically cover the bueno, the malo, and the feo. And so I'm going to choose each three episodes to have one of those designations here. All right, so most know, and for those who do not, EC Comics were the ones who were responsible for the grotesque and offensive Tales from the Crypt, but they also did um, the, the Vault of Horror, um, the Haunt of Fear, I believe. I'm probably getting these titles totally wrong, but they also did suspense stories. They, they did uh, crime stories as well, and so you caught a little bit of everything in the Tales from the Crypt episodes, from monsters to just the, the monster that is inside the human heart a lot of the time, and there was always a crazy twist. So the bueno of the first three episodes, starting in the very first season of Tales from the Crypt, the Bueno is most definitely going to be the first episode of the show that Robert Zemeckis directed. It was the first to be filmed, not the first to air, actually. It was ironically number two, and it was called And All Through the House. And this one, he actually tossed his wife in. She's basically a cheating wife, gets ready to kill her second husband, and at that very time when that happens, crazy guy from the insane asylum decides to escape, and he is terrorizing a small town dressed as Santa Claus. Yes, this is a holiday themed episode and it was actually originally adapted in 1972 with Joan Collins as the aforementioned cheating wife and you know that one was good you know but being 72 and you know it was also British anthology I'm not sure if that really had anything to do with it but it was kind of subpar compared to this adaptation. This one was scripted by Fred Decker who also did Monster Squad and Night of the Creeps so he's got some good stuff under his belt and this is the scariest of all three of these. You know, there's genuine, like, there's good gore, there's real terror, especially when you hit uh, my favorite line in the entire episode where the daughter is like, see mommy, I told you Santa was real and he didn't even have to come in through the chimney. I totally let him in. So you can probably imagine where this story goes, right? But no spoilers here. All that I'm gonna say is this one 
without a shadow of the doubt, my friends, is the bueno. It is the best of these first three episodes. Genuine Terror, amazingly directed by Robert Zemeckis. I mean, Back to the Future, guys. I mean, Forrest Gump, this, this guy is a genuine contender for one of the best of the last few decades. And so, yes, that definitely wins the award for the bueno of these first three episodes. So, numero dos, that's right. Numero dos, unfortunately, has to be the malo. Yes, I know, it's kind of upsetting. And this one was called The Man Who Was Death. And it actually originally appeared in Crypt of Terror. That's right, number 17, as a matter of fact. And this was actually the very first Tales from the Crypt episode ever to air in June of 1989. And it starred William Sadler as this executioner. That he's actually an electrocutioner, I should say, because, you know, he's the one pulling that switch and putting people on the electric chair. And he suddenly loses his job. And so after losing his job, and well, not after losing his job, but you know, throughout the entire story, you know, he's breaking the fourth wall. He's talking to the audience the whole entire time. And this episode was rife with all of the things expected on HBO at the time: violence, adultery, lots of lots of uh, nakedness, lots of boobage, major boobage, I should say, in a South Park reference. Um, plenty of profanity, just lots of depravity, basically. And you know, while it was an entertaining enough episode, Walter Hill directed this one. He's most known for stuff like. 48 Hours and another 48 Hours, you know, Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte respectively. And also, he did The Warriors, cult classic, Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis. But, you know, this one was more just kind of campy than anything else in my opinion. You know, it was decent, it was entertaining as I mentioned, but in the end, it's the malo for the sheer fact that it's not really that good. A lot of the Tales from the Crypts are of varying quality, and sometimes the humor hits well, sometimes it's just okay, sometimes it's really malo. This one's not terribly malo. I recommend watching it, but uh, yeah, as far as this original trio, guys, it's not the, the recommended of the three. So now, finally, we get to the final entry here today. And this one was called Dig That Cat, He's Real Gone. Yeah, and this one originally appeared in Haunt of Fear number 21. And it stars Joe Pantoliano. Yeah, that's right, Joe Pantoliano, man. And uh, he's he's been seen on many things. He was in Midnight Run. I think he was on uh, The Sopranos. But he's a very snarky, kind of almost like mobster type guy. You know, he plays a drunkenness who gets approached by some crazy scientist who's like, I'm going to give you the power of the nine lives of a cat. Yeah, the nine lives of a cat. He does like some brain operation to the guy and he gives him nine lives so he can be killed and come back to life. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So Richard Donner masterfully directs this and the dude ends up joining a circus and his name is Ulrich and you know, he's the undying Ulrich and that's his, his spiel and so he's getting shot, he's getting hung, he's getting electrocuted, yeah, back to that. But the, the most fail and ugly thing about this entire episode, and it's not a bad fail, it's the fact that it, um, it encompasses the ugly, dark humor of Tales from the Crypt so perfectly, you know? Whenever the show was like really funny, it was dark comedy and it was laughing about death and craziness like that. And this hits the nail on the head. Richard Donner directing, I mean, he did The Goonies. He did, um, well, originally he did more serious stuff like The Omen and Superman and whatnot. But yeah, this one is perfectly campy, but in that good way, unlike what we saw in the previous uh, episode that I mentioned. This was the third to ever air and uh, yeah, I, I, perfect example of the just really dark humor is where there's a mortician looking at a corpse right when uh, Ulrich is about to you know jump up and escape you know after coming back to life, and he's like, I appreciate your business. <laughs> yeah, so a mortician saying that to a dead corpse that really is all that Tales from the Crypt is about when it's good. So I'm gonna continue going through all of the bueno, all of the feo, all of the malo from the entire run of Tales from the Crypt all through this month of October. So I wanna extend a grande gracias to all of you peeps, all of you cinemigos across the country and the planet hopefully for getting to check this out. I have been Jaime in Fuego. It has been a pleasure to talk with all of you, so I extend a grande gracias for that, and I look forward to seeing all of you mañana, October 2nd, as we talk about the next three episodes from the first season of Tales from the Crypt, and I look forward to seeing all of you then. So until that moment arrives and we get to get scarific together, adios.